I want to go and explain all the odd ones on this video. Uh, you guys are you guys are going to be doing all of them. So in order to write an equation in point slope form, we need to know what point slope form is. And that's y minus y1 equals m parenthesis x minus x1. Now, the best way to use point slope form is to rewrite what's in black. In other words, leave the y1 blank, the m blank, and the x1 blank. And then you could plug in your values. So let's look at number one right here. And let's rewrite it without the x1, y1, or the m. So we're going to write down the equation y minus y1, but I'm going to leave a blank spot, equals m. I'm going to put a blank spot there. Then parenthesis x minus blank spot, and I close parenthesis. Now, of course, my x1 value and my y1 value come from the coordinate 2, 2. And the m value is obviously negative 3. So the m value always goes in front of x, which happens to be negative 3 right in front of those parentheses that have x in them. And the uh, x and y values are 2 and 2. So you put a 2 for x and a 2 for y. And guess what? We are done. That's it. It's that easy. You just put it in. That's it. Now, that's, that's your answer because it says write the equation in point slope form. Now, if they, were, if they were to say write it in slope intercept form, then you, bless, bless you. you, then you'd have to take this exact equation and get rid of the parentheses by distributing. You'd have to move the negative 2 over. That way you could get y by itself. Then it'll be in y equals mx plus b form. But right here, they just say write it in point slope form. So that's it. We're done. Like I said, we're going to be doing the odd ones on this video. I'll do the even ones on the next one with a different class. So right here, um, our x1, our y1 is right there. And our formula is y minus y1 equals m parenthesis x minus x1. Let me write that x1 in red. Okay. And it's as easy as taking your x1 and y1 and just plugging them in. The x goes right here. The y goes right, right there in red. Okay, And the m value of 0 goes right there. So when we plug in, we will have y minus blank spot equals blank spot parenthesis x minus blank spot close parenthesis. And when we plug in our y1 value, that would be what? Four. Negative 4. And it's important that it already had the minus sign and that we actually plug in a negative 4. The m value is what? 0. Okay. And the uh, x1 value is what? Negative 3. And of course, uh, the minus minuses change the plus plus. However, something weird is going to happen on this problem because well, there's a 0 that you need to, that you're multiplying by. So technically, this is the point slope form equation. Actually, let me ask you, on the back side, do they leave this as the answer? Or do they write the uh, equation y plus 4 or y equals negative 4? You write it. Y plus 4 equals 0. So, OK, so they didn't even bother writing this because when you multiply 0 times anything, it's going to be 0. Yeah. I, would leave, I would leave it like this on an open response test. But you need to be able to know that if you're multiplying everything by 0, then they might not write it. So it might just be y plus 4 equals 0 the way they wrote it on the back. Let's move on to number 5. So number 5, again, let's write down our uh, point slope form. y minus y1 equals m parenthesis x minus x1, close parenthesis. And when you do this, just rewrite everything, but leave the blank spots for x1, y1, and m. So you're going to write y minus blank spot equals blank spot parenthesis x minus blank spot. So our y1 value is 5. So you put the 5 right there. Our m value is negative 2 over 5. So you put negative 2 over 5 in front of the parenthesis. And our x1 value is negative 8. And you're done. The only thing that you could do to make this look a little nicer is to change the minus minus to a plus plus. So you'd have y minus 5 equals negative 2 fifths times x plus 8. And that should be on the back side on your answers. So when they give you a point and a slope, you just plug it in. The slope goes right there. The y value goes right there. The x value goes over here. And you're good to go. Unless you have a minus minus, then change that to plus plus. Let's 
jump to number seven. So number seven um, that has different instructions. It says write an equation in standard form, and we all need to remember that a x plus b y equals c is standard form, where we know that a is just a number, b is just a number, c is just a number. We do not want decimals or fractions. Okay. So what we're going to be doing on the second section is taking the equation and changing it to standard form that doesn't have decimals or fractions that have the ax plus by equals c. So what form is this in right now, guys? This is point slope. It's not y equals mx plus b, right? It doesn't have y by itself. It's actually y minus y1 equals m parenthesis x minus x1. If I asked you, now th they don't ask you to do this on the test, but if I told you, name me one coordinate that if I were to graph this line, name me a coordinate that the line would pass through. You should be able to look at this as your x1 value and this is your y1 value, but you have to think opposite because on the formula itself there's minuses. So if this is a minus 2, your x value is actually 2. If this is a negative 11, your, x, your y value is actually 11. So this line right here crosses through the coordinate 2, 11. Okay? But they're not even asking us to do that. What they want us to do is to change it to standard form. Now standard form, as you could see, there are no parentheses in there. No parentheses in there. So we have parentheses right here. I need to get rid of parentheses. What do I do? How do I get rid of the parentheses? Multiply, distribute. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And of course, we're going to rewrite everything. The y minus 11. Now, for standard form, we don't want y by itself. We want x's and y's on this side and the number on this side. So I do not want a negative 11. So I want to get rid of that negative 11 by doing the opposite, which would be plus 11. That would cancel out plus 11. Now, don't make the mistake of, of leaving it like this because we're so used to uh, writing it in uh, slope-intercept form. That's slope-intercept form. But the instructions don't say write it in slope-intercept form. The instructions say write it in what? Uh, standard, standard form. Y. Standard form. So I want my x's and y's on this side and just the number by itself on that side. So I need to get rid of that 3x by subtracting 3x and subtracting 3x. Now. I cannot do y take away 3x, so I'm just going to rewrite it. But I want my x term first. So that will be negative 3x with a positive y. Then the equal sign comes down, and then 5. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a standard form equation. However, if you check the back, it's not going to have it like this. Because on any test generator, for some reason, they don't want this a value being negative. So they actually multiply everything by negative 1. They change all the signs to make that a value positive. So the answer that you will see on the back will be a positive 3x minus a y equaling negative 5. So to answer your question on the, on the recording here, um, you asked why does the, x, the a value have to be positive? Because you always want it the most organized and the nicest, right? There will be times where you get a standard form equation Kind of like, let's say this. Let's say you had a standard form equation that was in 2x minus 4y equals 8. Even this one that has an a value that's positive, you would not see it like that on the multiple choice or on the answer selection. Why not? Because all of these guys are divisible by 2. So it's kind of like reducing. You'd have to divide everything by 2. And your answer would be x minus 2y equals 4. So they're always going to want to write the best looking equation, which would be this one right here, after dividing everything by 2 when it comes to standard form. It's kind of like having a fraction and reducing it. Uh, let's jump to number 9. Where is number 9? It's over here. Okay, so it's in point slope form. I need to change this to standard form, and standard form does not have parentheses. So let's distribute 2 times x, 2x, 2 times 5, 10. I've gotten rid of the parentheses. I still have the equal sign, the 7, the plus, and the y. <clears throat> now, if you get really good at this, you could do everything with one, do everything on one step. All right. Now, maybe I don't recommend it, but if you want to, you could try to do both steps in one. What do I mean by that? Let's get the x to the left side. So I would subtract 2x to get it to the left side, right? And we also need to get rid of that plus 7. So you could do minus 7 right off the bat, and what you do to one side, do to the other. So right there, I kind of did two steps in one. So my new standard form equation so far 
will be negative 2x with the positive y equaling 10 take away 7 is 3. If you do it the other way, you st still should get to the same exact equation. Now, um, I still need to get that negative 2 to become a positive 2. So what do I do? Divide everything by negative 1 or multiply everything by negative 1. Or you could just say change all the signs. If you change all the signs, 2x minus y equals negative 3. And that's the standard form answer that you should see on the back for number 9. Okay. Now, I did do two steps in one right here. On the previous question, um, I did one step at a time, like on number seven. You see right here, I could have added 11, added 11, and subtracted 3x and subtracted 3x, but I didn't do that. I did one step, rewrote it, and then I got rid of the 3x. So I hope that helps. Let's jump to number 11. Oh, it's already done for us. That was explained on the previous video. If you need it, watch it. Let's jump to number 13. Number 13, I want to change it to standard form. I don't want fractions or decimals. So we do have a decimal right here. If I don't want that decimal, what could I do? OK, so first of all, standard form does not have parentheses and does not have fractions or decimals. So we need to get rid of the parentheses and the decimal. I'm going to choose to get rid of the decimal first. Does anybody know how to get rid of that 1.5? Multiply it by what? You multiply it by, OK, let me ask you this, guys. Let's go over here to the side. What is, uh, what's 3 times 10? And look at this. Get it? OK, so what am I going to multiply everything by right here? Multi multiply by 10. Because if you multiply by 10, it'll make that decimal move over, right? Yeah. So let's multiply everything by 10. So put times 10 here times 10 there, times 10 there, and I do not multiply on the inside of the parentheses, okay? So if you multiply everything by 10, you're gonna end up with 10y plus 40 equals what? 30. 15 times x plus two. We do not multiply the x or the two by 10. Why? Because whatever you do to this outside term, it's like if you did it to the inside terms because of distributive property that exists right there. So I got rid of the decimal. Now I need to get rid of what? The parentheses. the parentheses. Standard form does not have parentheses. How do I get rid of those parentheses? Distribute. Dis distribute the 15. 15 times x? 15x. That's right. Thank you for being awake. Uh, 15 times 2? 30. Let me rewrite everything. The equal sign, the 40, the plus, the 10y. So I want it in standard form, ax plus by equals c. I did get rid of the decimals. I got rid of the parentheses. Now I need to get the x's and the y's on the left side, and that 40, that number, on the right side. So what do you want to get rid of first? Or do you want to get rid of both at the same time? Let's get rid of the x. OK, so the 15x, I'm going to get rid of it by doing a minus 15x. What I do to one side, I do to the other, minus 15x. I cannot subtract y's and x's. So I'm going to have to rewrite that. And rewriting it, you would have negative 15x plus 10y. Uh, let's, you know what? Let's do one step at a time. We still have the plus 40, don't we? So let's put plus 40 equals 30. Subtract 40. Subtract 40. Doing one step at a time here. Subtract 40. Subtract 40. We're going to end up with negative 15x plus 10y equaling negative 10. So this is standard form here, guys. But remember, the multiple choice that you see or the answer on the back, it's going to be written in its simplest form in the nicest, most beautiful way they could write the equation. Now, what do I mean by that? First of all, they're not going to have a negative as the a value. For some reason, they always want it to be positive. So you'd have to multiply everything by what? Negative 1 to change that negative 15 to a positive 15. Or simply just change all the signs. Look, 15 minus 10, oh, 15x minus 10y equals positive 10. Are you with me? Yeah. And then, not only that, you're not going to see that answer in the back either, because all three terms, 15, 10, and 10, they're all divisible by what? Two. By two. 5, right? So if we reduce everything or divide everything by 5, 
it'll make that equation look even nicer. So our final standard form equation will be 3x minus 2y equals 2. And if you check the back, that is what you shall see as the final answer in standard form, final equation in standard form. 3x minus 2y equals 2. A value is positive, and the numbers are as simple as they could be. We divided everything by 5. Let's jump to number 15. Another one with the decimal. And we know that standard form, you don't want decimal. So what could I multiply everything by to get rid of the decimal? Two. 10. Ten. Times 10, times 10, times 10. I do not mess with the inside of the parentheses. I don't multiply the inside of the parentheses by 10. So what do I have here? I have 10y minus 40 equals the decimal on 2.5 moves over one spot when you multiply it by 10. So you have 25 times x plus 3. You don't multiply the inside of the parentheses by 10. Why don't you multiply the inside of the parentheses by 10? Because whatever you do to this outside term, we know that there's distributive property. That's, it's like if I did it to the inside terms. OK, so we got rid of the decimal. Now, for standard form, ax plus by equals c, you do not want parentheses. So what do we do to get rid of the parentheses? Distribute 25 times x, 25x. 25 times 3 is 75. Bring down the equal sign. Bring down the minus 40. Bring down the 10y. So now we need a standard form ax plus by equals c. I need to get rid of the number, negative 40. So I'm going to do the opposite right there. I'm going to go plus 40. What I do to one side, I do to the other. My new equation will be 10y equals 25x plus 115, I believe. Now, I still need ax plus by on the left side. Right here, I just have 10y equals 25x. I want that 25x on the other side. So I'm going to have to subtract 25x and subtract 25x. And I, we know that we can't really subtract it, so we're just going to rewrite it. 25, actually negative 25x plus 10y equals 115. Now, let's say you did all this correct math, and you got to that answer in standard form, and you look for it on your multiple choice on the final exam, and it's not there. What should you do? Multiply everything by negative 1, which is going to change all the signs, right? It's going to make it a positive 25x, a negative 10y, and a negative 115. Now, what if it's still not on the multiple choice? What else do you think they did? Divide, Divide everything by? Five. By 5, right? Because 25 is divisible by 5, 10 is divisible by 5, and 115 is divisible by 5. So if you were to divide everything by 5, we're going to get this final answer. That's going to be 5x minus 2y equaling negative 115 divided by 5 is negative 23. So yeah, that's the correct answer that you should see on the back side of your homework here. 5x minus 2y equals negative 23. Let's move on to number 17. Now 17 is on the third part of our homework. And on the third part it says write each equation in slope intercept form. We know that that's y equals mx plus b. And right here, they give it to us in point slope form, and we need to change it to y equals mx plus b. Now, y equals mx plus b, it's OK to have fractions in that. It's not like standard form where you can't have decimals or fractions. But you don't have parentheses in y equals mx plus b. So let's get rid of those parentheses by doing what? Distribution. Distribution negative 7 times x, that's negative 7x. Negative 7 times 1 is negative 7. Bring down the equal sign. Bring down the y, the plus, the 1. Now, we don't want ax plus by equals c. We want y equals mx plus b. So what do I do now to get the y by itself? Subtract, subtract 1 and subtract 1. So your final slope intercept form equation is y equals negative 7x minus 8. And that's y equals mx plus b. Really easy to graph right there. Crosses at negative 8, and you go down 7 over 1. So on this third section, all you're doing is distributing and then getting y by itself. If we go to number uh, 19, it's exactly what we do. We distribute and then get y by itself. Now, you could distribute 3 halves, or you could get rid of 3 halves. It's up to you, right? Maybe I should do it both ways. Let me distribute the 3 halves. 
Whoops, that was ugly. Distribute the three halves. When you distribute three halves times x, that'll be three halves x. When you distribute three halves times four, bless you, it's a good idea to put the four over one, and then you could actually multiply uh, three times four, that is 12, and one time, or two times one, that is two. Put the plus sign right there, and you'll end up with three over two x plus six. So distribution, now you have the y minus five, and you don't want that minus five, so you go plus five, plus five, and here's your slope intercept form equation, y equals three over two x plus 11. So if you're wondering, or if you're like thinking, man, I don't like distributing fractions, you don't have to. Technically, you could get rid of the fraction for a little while, it'll come back at the end, but how could you get rid of the, uh, the fraction by multiplying everything by the denominator two? So if you wanted to, let me show you here, you could go through and multiply everything by two, times two, times two, times two, but not the inside of the parentheses. That way you'd end up with two y minus 10 equals the twos cancel, you'd have three parentheses x plus four, and then you could get your y by itself by distributing three times x, three x, three times four is 12, bring down the equal sign, the minus 10, the two y, and now you could get the y by itself by adding 10 here and there. So you'd end up with uh, 2y equals 3x plus 22. And then you would divide everything by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. You'd get y equals 3 halves x plus 11. Same exact thing that we got down here, 3 halves x plus 11. But on one, I used the fraction, I distributed the fraction, or on the other, I got rid of the fraction and then distributed. So let's jump to the next one. More than 20 minutes. So on number 21, it's in point slope form. They want it in slope intercept form. You could choose to distribute. You could choose to get rid of fractions first. It's totally up to you. I'm going to distribute first. It's easy to distribute because you're multiplying negative two times x negative 2x, negative 2 times the fraction, negative 1 fourth. Well, first of all, a negative times a negative is a positive. And I'm going to put this 2 over a 1. Let me do it in blue so you can see it better. And then I'm going to multiply 2 times 1, and I will get 2. And then I'm going to multiply 1 times 4, and I will get 4. And of course, 2 over 4, that could be reduced down to 1 half. So I really have y minus 2 thirds equals negative 2x plus one half. Now I want to get y by itself. So I could add two thirds and add two thirds, but in order to add fractions, you need a common denominator. And some people forget about that. So you might want to get rid of the fractions. You could get rid of the fraction two thirds by multiplying everything by what? By three, if you wanted to get rid of the two thirds, or you can multiply everything by two, if you wanted to get rid of the one half. Or if you want to get rid of both fractions at the same time, you can multiply everything by 6. Check it out. If I multiply this by 6, this by 6, this by 6, and the fraction by 6, it'll get rid of all fractions at the same time. I will have 6y, and 6 times 2 is 12, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So 6y minus 4, and then 6 times negative 2x, that's going to be equals negative 12x. And 6 times 1 is 6, but then 6 divided by 2, that'll be a 3. So you got rid of both fractions by multiplying everything by the LCD 6. And now you could try to get y by itself by adding 4 to both sides, plus 4 there, plus 4 over here. Rewrite it, 6y equals negative 12x plus 7. Final step would be to divide by 6, divide by 6, divide by 6. So we end up with y equals negative 2x plus 7 over 6. And that is slope-intercept form. It's okay to have fractions in slope-intercept form. So this has been a very long video. I apologize. Those are all the qu odd questions that we're doing on this homework. You guys need to do all of them. So go back and do the even ones and uh, check your answers on the back side of your worksheet.